Hello and welcome to Getting Good at Godot Part 5, the least poisonous Godot tutorial on the internet. In this tutorial, I'm going to be explaining the topic of collision. However, before we get into the, into the meat of collision, I'm going to need to show you about some physics bodies and explain how they work. First, we need to make some adjustments to how we've set up this project. We're going to have to totally delete this node, so you can either click it or press delete to go down here to delete nodes. Um, now we're going to add another node of type kinematic body 2D. So let's go down here. And for now, just leave this at the origin. Um, we don't need to move it yet. Let's give this one a child. So make sure it's selected. Child sprite. And let's load back in the icon. Very good. Um, and Again, I, be especially sure to leave the sprite into the 0, 0 coordinate um, right at the center of your kinematic body because this coordinate is relative to the parent. So if I were to move this kinematic body, this is still 0, 0 because it's relative to the kinematic body that is still in the same place. Um, okay, so let's add one more child uh, to the kinematic body, which is collision shape 2D. And this is something new. This is um, going to tell us the collision boundaries for our physics body here, the kinematic body. And um, we can do this by going to the shape property. Uh, and here, where it says null, we can select any of these shapes really, but for now let's do rectangle shape 2D. If we zoom in, you can see there's a little blue rectangle in the middle here. It's got these two dots on it. So we can drag these dots and have it actually fill out the extents of the you know, mascot. There we go, so he's properly rigged up. Um, and in case this is a bit annoying, you can press the um, visibility button here and it'll just hide that for you so you don't have to deal with it. Okay, cool. So let's just get back to where we were in part 4. Um, you know, before you uh, come at me angrily, wondering why I've taught you how to do literally nothing. Um, I have adjusted the internal logic of the game uh, a little bit, so now we're dealing with kinematic body. I don't need to explain this, it isn't that useful to explain. I'm sure you gather that something's changed. So, um, in path, we can overwrite player.gd, but if we do this, it gives us the offer to load. Um, and this is fine, I'm going to load uh, player.gd and I'm going to delete everything in it. And then I'm going to save it. And um, this is because our last one extended sprite and it had all the functions and whatnot which were all geared to sprite. And we're not working with the sprite, we're working with the kinematic body 2D. So we're going to do extends kinematic body 2D, funk ready, pass. Okay, there we go. So we have a little very basic script here, and I'm also going to name this player for clarity. Back. Okay. So here, I can set, I'll just put in some movement code. Uh, funk process delta now, this is where things get a little bit different, because we're using a kinematic body uh, 2D, which doesn't have the set pos or get pos functions. Uh, instead, this has the move function. Um, so, move takes in a vector2 property of two numbers, which um, correspond to the relative direction that it wants to move. So, if we want to move um, our kinematic body uh, one unit in the x direction every so often then we'll do change this to a one and if we press let's move this if we press uh, you know start the project it does continuously move one unit in the x direction um, and the advantage of this is that this will detect collision so it's very easy to use so I'm just going to make a new empty vector called move vector, call it vector2, zero, 0, Then I'm going to, if 
input dot is action first move right uh, move vector dot x so instead of adding to this we're going to set it equal to something because effectively what move does is um, add to the position already so let's just set this equal to I don't know one and left input dot is action pressed move left move vector dot x equals minus one if input dot is action pressed move up vector dot y equals minus one and almost done I have to do the down direction now vector dot y equals one okay sweet now we can just do move by a factor of move vector. And hopefully, uh, this will get us up to more or less where we were before. And it does, unsurprisingly. Excellent. Okay, so there is actually, before we get into collision, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to set a global variable here called speed. I'm going to set it to 250. And I feel it's a good time to cover this now, since... Um, you know, I'm sure you're competent with the syntax and how things sort of relate to each other. And now we're going to um, correct for differences in frames per second by doing speed times delta here. And we can copy and paste this. And speed times delta. There we go. So instead of moving by a factor of 1 every time this is called, this now moves by a factor of speed times delta. Um, where delta is the number of seconds since the last time this was called. So this means that the game will play at a constant uh, rate, despite the game's frame rate. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good is the point. There we go. So it moves a bit faster because it still means it's... 250 was a bit high, but whatever, it's okay. You can, you can always tweak that number. Um, okay, so now that's out of the way. Uh, I'll move... Movement code is more or less done, but now what we're going to do is make a new kinematic body, and we're going to call it Wall. So let's do uh, kin. Oh god, I can't spell. Ah, I can't spell. Okay, kinematic body. Let's call it Wall, and let's give it a sprite. And you could draw up a beautiful wall texture right now, but I'm not going to because I don't have a wall texture on me. I'm just going to reuse the good old icon because it's one of the best placeholders known to man. And I'm just going to make it a bit longer um, and a bit thinner to signify a wall. Um, yeah. So I can move all of this down here. Wait. Oh, I'm moving the sprite. Okay. So here's a tip. Press W to access move mode. And then select the kinematic body and do that instead of clicking everywhere. And one more thing, add a child of the uh, kinematic body, add a collision shape 2D. Rectangle shape. And just extend this uh, like that. And it should more or less work out. Okay, cool. And again, let's hide this. So now, hopefully, if we get into the game with this little wall, the wall stops it from moving. How exciting. Um, hooray. Uh, we're almost able to make a real 2D side-scroller with real collision and real movement. Um, hooray. So we could, you know, play around with some other physics bodies, because I've only covered kinematic body 2D because this one doesn't get affected by gravity. I could if I wanted to, I could change, um, let's change this into, oops, let's change this all into a little floor. And this part of the video is optional, by the way. If you don't want to sit here and watch this, you don't have to. Um, and we can do the same thing for this. In fact, I almost recommend that you don't, because I suspect this could be confusing. We've made this little little uh, floor here, and we could, theoretically, add a rigid body, 
which is affected by the gravity. Uh, give it another sprite. Again, let this, this is going to be the icon. Give it a collision body or collision shape, not body. Uh, can make it square, rectangle. Oop. Oop. Back to zero, zero. And let's stick it here. There we go. And we should be able to. Uh, we can't. We can't knock it off, but you know, whatever. Um, there you go. Either way, it's a nice little. Uh, it's a nice little experience here. And I encourage you to play around with this. Play around with making maybe a rigid body move. There's enough documentation uh, on Godot Docs to do that. Um, it's quite exciting. So yeah, stay stay tuned for. Part 6, which will be on the topic of intersections and instancing, both very small topics, but I hope you enjoy.